Thank you, guys. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Hugo, and this is Aviva. And we will be talking to you today about Lebone, which means light stick in the South African language of Sutu. So uh, I'm sure most of you have experienced the feeling when you have two bars left in your cell phone. Or you might even <laughs> have forgotten your, your charger in New York. And uh, this is a, a big problem for most of us. And so when you want to call that loved one that inspired you to take on social change, and uh, you have to count your words, <laughs> or you're on a, on a conference call that, uh, you know, with a VC and you need to, to get in that last pitch, and you have no more power, and you hear the tweet tweet in the background. I'm very stressful. Well, Africans face that problem every day and consistently. So in the world today, there are more than two billion people who live off of the grid, people who do not have access to reliable energy. 500 million of those people live in sub-Saharan Africa. This is an enormous problem. And it's been obviously a problem that's faced us for a very long time. And so that is why we've seen a community of folks coming together around this problem. And this morning we saw the phenomenal flap bag uh, by Sheila Kennedy um, and the entire gang here at PopTech, which is really sort of an, a, an amazing design solution. And we've all hopefully read some of Paul Pollock's work on how to uh, on, on how to help people and how Africans hack their own solutions together. Well, so we want to, to, to take that one step further and, and contribute to that community. So when we did our research in Africa, we discovered that this problem has two major components. One is an economic one. Africans and all people at the bottom of the pyramid make enough money to pay for some of the solutions that could allow them to invest in education that could allow them to save money by not spending it on small disposables every day. But they make that money over the course of a year and not uh, you know, on a weekly basis. And so there's an economic component to this problem. Secondly, is Africa has got a major distribution issue. This is a continent that has its own nuclear power facility in Southern Africa that has some of the first and best hydropower dams in the Rift Valley and that has all the natural resources you could ever need under its soil, and yet that power never reaches the point where it is needed the most. So these economic and distribution problems that Hugo just highlighted have secondary additional repercussions as well. These children are studying around a kerosene lantern doing their homework, but many families can't afford to provide even this level of lighting to their homes and to their children. Even these privileged children, though, have repercussions associated with the resources that they're using. We spoke to teachers in Tanzania where we were working last summer, and they would describe how their children would come in with their noses, the inside of their noses, coated with soot from bending over these open flames. And this is a region where respiratory infections are the number one killer of children. So it's a very big problem, entirely suboptimal. So when we in the West need power, assuming we're connected to the electrical grid, we take our plug, we stick it into the wall socket, which is attached to the grid. But what do we do in Africa where there is no wall socket and there is no grid? Well, we'd like to tap into the power of dirt. <laughs> Specifically, we do this by using microbial fuel cells, or as we like to call them, dirt-powered batteries. We use locally available, inexpensive materials to harvest the energy produced by a subset of naturally occurring soil microbes. By harnessing this energy, we can power light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, and hope, hope to, in the future, be able to power cell phones and small radios, which are ubiquitous even across the most rural areas of Africa. We've done two pilots in Africa. The first is in Tanzania. Stephen, our co-founder, who is from Tanzania and now studies engineering at Harvard University, is here explaining to members of a village the early construction of a prototype. This pilot was completed in Ligaruki, which is an off-grid village in the foothills of Kilimanjaro in northern Tanzania. This past summer, we were in Namibia. And we're going to be returning to Namibia this spring to test our first manufactured device of this kind. 
Thank you, Aviva. Uh, we are blessed with um, a great team. So on the one side, we have um, the founding team that's either directly from Africa, Sierra Leone, Tanzania, South Africa, or care deeply about Africa. And we have had the privilege of having a first-rate education in America, and we now want to, to, to give back to Africa. Uh, we also have um, been really blessed with uh, amazing supporters. Uh, the World Bank, for instance, catalyzed an entire market by seed granting different NGOs and companies to help solve this problem. Um, and then, most lately, uh, amazing communities such as PopTech, where we've been connected with other great social entrepreneurship fellows. So now I want to take you to an African uh, sunset. And uh, I want you to look at, at that darkness. This darkness is a reality for at least 500 million people in sub-Saharan Africa. And it is not only a reality, but it's also a responsibility for us. And so when you look at this level of darkness again, rather than curse the darkness, we should not light a candle, but power an LED. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.